Yo, what's up? It's your boy Concrete, man. I am right here trying to do this podcast thing, man. I don't know what I'm calling it. We thought about calling it the Concrete Facts, the Concrete Jungle, Exposure, Exposure. I don't know. That sounds just really weird. Anyways, guys, thank you for joining, man. I know this is like, I told you guys that I was going to drop a podcast today, and this is what we're doing, Perito. So if you're on here right now, it is roughly 6.02 p.m., Perito. So check this out, dog. I wanted to come in here and talk emergency because last night I didn't get the news until until like very late at night. So I'm on YouTube and I noticed that one of my favorite rappers, Eminem, got dissed. I know, I know. Eminem got dissed once again. The last one that dissed him that I remember that I recall was uh, MGK. And MGK, I want to say, did his thing. He did his thing. Now, I, can, I feel like I can talk about this rap shit and I can talk about this dissing shit because I was once a lyrical assassin myself, Perritos. I, I was, I was. And, don't, and I know you're looking at your, at, your, at your YouTube and your screen right now like, come on, dog. Fool, I used to get bars. <laughs> bars. One of the dudes that decided to, uh, that decided to diss uh, one of the greats that I consider one of the greats goats if you will is none other than one of the pioneers of this music shit called melly mel now we should all respect our elders and we respect the pioneers as they've paved the way for many of us right whether it's in comedy whether it's in music whether it's in acting or anything that has to do with a profession where somebody has done it at a highest at the highest level and has succeeded and been successful not only as 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 creating a genre but maybe even monetarily whatever the case right we look at these people and we say this is amazing i want to be like that guy right there now melly mel is quite before my time i would consider my pioneers that from what i remember listening to music it you know it was guys like uh you know tupac and biggie and you know uh you know uh diddy and all these guys that were that were when, when i was starting to know what the music was and when i started falling in love with hip-hop this must have been like around i don't know i want to say like 94 93 or something like that right so i'm really young right really young <laughs> You guys will get that later. <laughs> so, I heard the diss, Perritos. Melly Mel dissing Eminem. And I'm going to be completely honest. You know what, dude? Let's get, the, let's get the video ready real quick. I don't... I Because I want you guys to hear it before anything. All right? Eric, Johnny, roll the video, dog. It's the one... No apologies, this ain't a disclaimer I'm the king of legend, the first hall of famer Making diss tracks, I know you with that Now everybody get ready for the kickback Why you hurt, why you mad, now you look bad Like a roach just crawled out of your book bag In a pack clad, you lack clad Go to bed with no sucker Stop it, stop it, stop it Bruh, what? Look dog. again, respect the legends, bro Respect the pioneers I just think if he would have dropped this in 88, it would have been a banger. Banger. I mean, everybody in the car, cassette tape, A-track, the whole vibe is going in the whip. We bumping that Pioneer system all the way up. Speakers just zooming. But right now, right now, that, that ain't hot. Keep playing, though. Let me hear in a pack clash, you lack clash, go to bed with no supper, cause you gotta suffer the backlash. The top five is cap, you the piss just on the floor in the elevator of rap. Why you ducking on the game when you shit on my name? Why they put Pee Wee Herman in the Hall of Fame? I would give you a pound, but I break your hand. I got the lawyer so white, he will take your land. Yo, check your man coming. Wait, what'd he say? Stop it, man. He said, he said, lawyer so white. He said, lawyer so white. He'll take your land. He said he got a lawyer so white, he'll take your land. That's crazy, dog. Still not a punchline, but that's crazy. Keep playing. And never popping pills again. We call them Pill Clinton or either Pill Gates. What pill did homie take to make him hate the great? Think you are, but you ain't. Still, you made a mistake. Hit a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna give your fans one more chance to go online and re energize that romance. After that, say your last goodbye. Cut before I put Matthew's likes out. I'm turning up his fucking Wi right, Fi. Just, just stop it. Uh, I'm just gonna say it right out. I think it's garbage. Um, But that's because I think I don't. 
like I wasn't preview to that style of hip hop, and that was like the origins of hip hop, right? So I think anybody that wasn't a part of that movement is probably not gonna feel those raps, right? Because I think, you know, it was it, it was it, it was such a like hip hop was just such in its infancy right there, and that. 30 years does make a difference. 35 years does make a difference in how we listen to hip hop and what we consider to be hot and not. But nonetheless, he is a pioneer. He is a legend. Do I think Eminem's going to respond? <sighs> no. And I don't think he should. I don't think he should because, like, if, if you think about it, that'd be like me walking down the street, right? And then there's, like, the senior citizen dude, and, and, he's, tell and he's talking shit to me, like, am I going to go up and punch him? Like, no, dog, why? <laughs> like, why would I do that? Right? You probably just say, hey, man, I respect my elders. Um, <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? Go on about your day, bro. Just have a good day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, take, you know, take your vitamins and shit. You know what I'm saying? But, but honestly, dude, I, I just, I don't think, I don't think Eminem's going to respond. I don't think he should. Para que perritos for what, dog? doesn't even make any sense, dog. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And I'm a savage. But it doesn't matter what I think. I decided to bring someone on today who comes from the land of hip hop, who has yeah. seen this shit f from his very own eyes at one point as he walked the mean streets of New York. I'm not sure what borough he's from, but if I had to guess, I would say New York. Is that a bro? <laughs> no. I don't know if that's a bro. Let's just ask him himself. Edgar Rivera in the house. Yo, yo, yo. What What's up, up bro? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. From the Bronx. Okay, so you're from the Bronx. From the Bronx, where, where hip-hop started, yo. From the BX. Yes, Can I ask yes. you a question? Go. Are you a... Are you a big pun Puerto Rican, or are you a J-Lo Puerto Rican? I'm a big pun Puerto Rican. You're a big pun Puerto Rican. Yeah. Holler at me. Why big pun? I don't know, man. I just, I, I feel like, like, yeah, like, pun really represented us. Okay. You know? So it was like the streets so you weren't, growing so, up. So you weren't feeling like I'm Jenny from the block? Um, I don't know if this is the nicest way to start this podcast, <laughs> but no. You didn't ever felt like... I felt like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I respect J-Lo, yeah, and what she's done for the for the community and for Puerto Ricans, but, yeah, like, if you ask me who I felt my big pun, you know, I felt more big pun in the 90s. That's who... Yeah. Who was it? J-Lo was just dancing and, and living color. Nobody knew who she was yet. Nobody... And you already knew who... Uh, who, 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 who had, have, you, have you ever met him? Yes. Yeah, how was he in person? Cool. Cool He's dude. Cool. I didn't have a conversation with him like that, but you're a cool yeah. dude. You know, I got to up. meet him. I got to meet him recently too. I was I was hosting a show. Oh yeah. And he was standing right behind me and I turned around and I said, What's up? And he nice. shook my hand and I was like But you know who I did meet? Melly Mel. Like Terror Squad. All right. Who'd you meet? Uh Melly Mel. Oh it's okay. Uh -huh. So that's what I really want to talk to you about. You know, I don't know if it was me, bro, or I, I, I couldn't, right? I couldn't understand shit in I that song, understand what bro. He was saying. All I, I heard was like shots, and I I'm caught like, a few, I caught a few little things. I thought it was just, I was like, going was I'm a lot old. Going on. I'm like, I'm old, bro. No, like, take this off. that was a lot going on. That was, I was that like, was it, it sounded on. like it was playing back in the eight, in, in the eight track. That's how that shit sounded, it bro. Just, it just sounded really outdated. Yes, and, and uh, yeah, I met him. I did a, a few street festivals out there, and um, okay. and he was always performing. He was always in the streets in the Bronx. Yeah, but he is one of the pioneers. I didn't, I didn't understand. Can you explain to me how he dissed him? Because I really di didn't hear nothing. Uh, he has said that Eminem basically like he doesn't understand. Melly Mel doesn't understand why Eminem is getting inducted to the, you know, hip hop rock and roll Hall of Fame, oh. and so he's calling. You know, he called them. Bill Clinton, he called them, uh, you know, a bunch of <laughs> yeah, That's only a Melly Mel snap. Yeah. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. And, then, and then he had a line where he said, uh, you look like you got cockroaches coming out of your book bag. Raw. And then he hit him with that raw. <laughs> Bendito, bro. You gotta respect it, like you said, bro. It's you gotta like, respect like getting this, like, like by your grandfather. Come on, like, bro. You, what are you gonna do? Dog? I don't know. You, do you think he's not gonna? I don't think Eminem will do that either, bro. I don't honestly. think Eminem's gonna go for what? But it'll be fucking hot as shit, though, right? For what? <laughs> I don't know. I just think Melly's like, I guess, to a point where, where, where some of these cats feel like they see this new generation coming up, 
And if and it's like that in everything, how you said it. It's like that in the music industry. It's like that in, in comedy and acting. I'm pretty sure it's like that. When they see these new cats coming up, they get a little, mm. Mm. So that, that could be a power move on his part. Mm. If Eminem responds to this shit, the one that's going to benefit from it is going to be Melly Mel, bro. Because oh, he's going to put he's gonna put shine some light on him again. Facts. Facts. A lot of cats out there don't know who Melly Mel was and what he did for the hip-hop game, you know? Do, 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 do you remember that, like, vividly around that time? Nah, but not really, man. Because, see, it, I'm different, man. So I was born in Puerto Rico. Okay. So I moved to the Bronx when I was, like, 9, 10. Uh, did not know English. You know, I learned English. I'm still learning. I'm still, I, I'm still learning this <laughs> shit. I'm still fucking up words left and right. And I'm looking at the camera because Eric said when I got something important to say, look at the camera. I'm still learning. Yeah, but my, that, my parents put me in ESL. Okay, I was and in you, ESL And you got too. comfortable. Like, you like, oh, shit. Were you in ESL Into high it? school, bro. Into high school? <laughs> <laughs> and in high school, they were like, there's no ESL. I was like, I don't want to go there. But you want to know how I learned to read? I learned to read because I used to read in Spanish. Really? So I used to, I, like... Because if I didn't know how to write it, I'd be like, okay, beca use, beca use, and that's how it would spell. Beca use. Yes, I mean, I, I, um, I guess as a kid, you learn it fast. You learn English faster, right? So I tell people, I don't know, I don't know that much about hip hop in the beginning because I didn't know English, and it wasn't in four, it wasn't in my house. In my house, there was only one television, and we played whatever my parents wanted to and see. You was probably bumping like Hector Lavoe or something. Yeah, some shit la novela, la fucking novela. Walter Mercado. When Walter Mercado came on, everybody was like, shh, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's that's all I, you know. So people tell me about yeah. cartoons and shit when they were little, and I'm like, dude, I, but yo, but you my age. I was like, yeah, but you know, we watch different shit. So I, I started with hip hop. Really, hip hop really came into my life when I got to high school. Okay. Because even in ESL, <laughs> they don't talk about hip hop. They have subtitles on it. They like to talk about merengue. They talk about merengue and shit. But that's when I started. Like when I started, when I got into high school, that's when I really got started into the hip hop. But I did see it. You know, I did see like the the, the pun era. Yeah. Fat Joe. You Was know. it a culture shock? <sighs> or, or, or did did you kind of just simulate because you saw a lot of your countrymen there? I think they like like pun really like re represented the Bronx. Okay. So so it was like something that you could relate to, you know what I'm saying? Like like right now you'd be like, oh I'm Puerto Rican, oh you know I'm gonna like reggaeton, which is true I do like reggaeton, but it's like you know you go with what you feel. Got you know it. pun 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 was a beast, bro. Yeah, pun's dope. And I like Biggie as well. So it's you know it's nothing against Boros because that's another thing from New York, you know Brooklyn, the Bronx. It was always that beef with all Brooklyn, New York, Queens, you know, all those boroughs and different shit. So people complain because hip hop originally started in the Bronx. Damn. You know, not far from where I grew up too, you know, the Damn, projects. Right there. Yeah, dude. Were, w would you say that there was Puerto Ricans involved in the beginning of hip hop? Yeah. Was there a Mexican involved by any chance? No. <laughs> nah, hey, why do you got to say it like that, though? Like, why do you got to say it like that, though? Just though? no. <laughs> so there was not one Mexican involved in the making of hip-hop? Uh, you don't remember? Nah, dude. Damn. I don't. I don't. You put me in a spot. I'm sorry to the Mexican. I tell you I tell you all the time, Concrete, though. The Mexican in New York is way different from the Mexican out here, bro. Yeah, how different? It's, it's way different. I tell people, man, I feel like the Mexicans in New York are, like, they, they, they go there and, and they work. You got a lot of, like, people that go there and work. They don't mess with nobody. They, they're in their own little zone. They do that here, own too. Zone. Yeah, but out here, I feel like you guys, like, this is all Mexico. You know? <laughs> they, they, this, we in Mexico right now. They just took this shit away from, from you guys. But I feel like you guys, the, the Mexicans here who are born here, they, they know English. They, they You know, they they, yeah. they know the language. So it's different. You it's know? Like, so it's, yeah, I yeah. Feel the, the Mexican in New York. here. Yeah, the Mexican in New York is real humble, real humble. You know, and then I came out here and I made a cholo for the first time. And I was like, oh, shit, yo. Let me look at the camera. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's the real deal, huh? Yeah, dude, yeah, it bro. It was like an anomaly, huh? When I saw it, I, I was like, yeah, I didn't even know, man. One time I went to like one of those, uh, you know, the, the the sports stores. I was, I was, you know, went to a sports store and I was in my own world, bro. Not thinking about that shit. I'm, I'm not looking for problems. I'm you know, in my own world sometimes looking at shit and I'm paying. And the lady is like taking my stuff and she keeps looking back like nervous. And I, and I look back and I saw like like two dudes, bro. Two dudes and then there was another dude over there and they looked, clearly looked like cholos, but they were looking at each other. 
And this lady was so nervous that she got me nervous. And the guy stepped up to them, and I don't know what they said, but after a couple of minutes, they shook hands and walked away, and that lady went, <gasps> That's what was going down. Have you ever been hit up out here in LA? What do you mean hit up? Like you ever been like, hey, where you from, dog? No, bro. Thank <laughs> God, bro. Never, it's never and wait, look at all the shit I wear, bro. Cause yeah. I'm like, look at, look at, look at me yeah. talking shit. Oh, telon, that's like. I, I, I'll, I'll become Puerto Rican real quick. No, papi, no, no. Yo no soy de esa mierda, no. Tú sabes. Yo <laughs> no. Right yo, yo soy del bron de J-Lo, de J-Lo, J-Lo de allá. De J-Lo. Yo no soy, yo no soy. No, I've, I've, I don't know, man. It's, it's weird, man. Because out here, people think I'm Armenian. That's <laughs> some bullshit, bro. I can bro. see that. Arme- I, I get that. Armenian the most. Driving? Not 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 an Armenian car. Definitely What's not. A, a, like a BMW. Or... <laughs> no, no. I'm a fucking Puerto Rican. I got a Toyota, man. What's wrong with you? Oh, that's good. Don't you like saving <laughs> gas and shit? Okay, you like saving gas. Because <laughs> it's very expensive out here now, bro. Let me ask you a question, dude. You're going to stay in an island for the rest of your life. You can either take tacos or bacalao for the rest of your life. What are you taking? Fuck, Tacos. You're taking tacos over bacalao, dog? Yeah, Over your bro. country dish, dog? Yo, bro, who told you bacalao was a Puerto Rican dish? <laughs> this dude said that shit. Like, he asked Siri on the way here, tell me a Puerto Rican dish, bacalao. Arroz con gandules? You guys don't eat arroz con gandules. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay. But you gave me bacalao, bro. So where's bacalao from That's then? codfish. <laughs> Everybody eats that shit, bro. Bacalao is codfish, bro. This dude just said bacalao alone. Bacalao is codfish? Yes, bro. In what country, dog? <laughs> In what country? <laughs> and the one we're sitting on, Ron, dog. I did this one. Okay, so let me take that question back, fool. Arroz con gandules or tacos? Uh, arroz con gandules. What do you have against tacos? Dude, that's a few seconds ago. I love tacos. But yeah, but now you're going the other way. So what do you have against tacos? <clears throat> um... I don't have nothing against tacos. What would bro. make you change like so quick? But I'm not a big fan of tacos. Damn. I, I don't know. I just felt like I had to throw that one in there. Yeah. Just just a little. I like just tacos a little. just a little. I, there's tacos everywhere, but I'm not. I don't know, bro. Damn. Not, not offensive. I'd rather eat a plate. A plate. Yeah, I'll be like, throw all that shit in there. For the people that don't know arroz con dulas, what is arroz con dulas? Uh, it's like uh, uh, yellow rice, and it has a... Uh, how the fuck do you call gandules? I don't know. It fucking, it's like little little green peas that you know. Mm. I, have you ever had gandules? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have. They, it looks like it looks it just like, sounded like he was in court. Let the record state. <laughs> like the, it, it looks like lentils. Yes, almost, almost like lentils. And, and they make a they make an arroz and it's yellow you know, yellow rice with gandules. They put ham. You know, my father makes one. He call it arroz apestoso. Damn. Stinky rice, yo. My father puts bacon, ham, Killing fucking it. chorizo, longaniza, <laughs> whatever he could fucking find. Salchicha, this shit. It's a, it's a fucking heart attack, bro. But it's a delicious, man. So I make it. I make it out here myself because you can't find it out here in LA, bro. You can't. There's no. There's not it's one not single Puerto Rican. Yeah, there's a couple, but it's not like. It's not like back at home, huh? It's not like that. It's, home. it's not. Y- y'all tell people, man. One thing I miss about New York is is the food, bro. Mm. And there's good food here. Don't take me wrong. There's yeah, good yeah, food here. here but in sure. New York, you could say if if, if you if you want to have Colombian food, you yeah. can find a Colombian restaurant. You want Dominican food, you find a Dominican. You okay. find Mexican restaurant, Puerto Rican restaurant, Cuban restaurant. Out here, it's like everything is Mexican. I said it. Yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a few Korean spots that are pretty hot. <laughs> Salvadorians, you know. Mm-hmm. Pupusas. Mm-hmm. Pupusas or a taco? Uh, tacos. I bet. Why not a pupusa? What do you have because against Because do you have a big Salvadorian following? Yeah. No. Okay, so they're very nice people. I like these people. I have nothing against them. <laughs> I had an ex that was Salvadorian and fucked it up for the whole race. <laughs> Dog, you're at this club. The girl you've been looking for, she's right there. She gave you the eye already, dog. Mm-hmm. How do you spit game to her in, in, in that Puerto Rican accent, in Spanish? Damn, dog. I spit game one time for her. You know what, bro? I've never been that spit game kind of dude, bro. Dog, imagine. Imagine? That's all you got to imagine right now, dog. I just want you to imagine going to the mic and spit game in Spanish to a girl that, that you've been eyeballing all week. And she just happens to be at the club that night. How would you talk to her in Puerto Rican? In Puerto Rican? Rican? In the accent, in Spanish. 
Chacho, mami, déjame decirte una cosa. Te estoy mirando toda la semana y me tienes como que el corazón bien alterado. So, ¿qué va a pasar? <risa> you, you're right through that. So, ¿qué va a pasar? Tú sabes. Like, I feel like Puerto Rico is always talking with that. Mami, tú sabes, mami. Yo te voy a... Mira, chacho, conmigo, conmigo. Mira, yo te pongo a brincar. High through, high through. That's a Puerto Rican word right there. High through, it's like right through. But they go high through. High through? Yeah, it's like right on. Okay. That's a Puerto Rican. Mami, mira, tú sabes, mira, high through. Te voy a pasar por la piedra. That's some dirty shit, right? You understood that, right? Te voy a pasar por la piedra. Te voy a pasar por la piedra. And then yeah. you whistle, like that. Oh, you got to the whistle. <laughs> Dude, have you ever had pickup game, bro? Yeah. Like, what would you say in Mexico? Oh, like, like, yeah, if I had to ask you, if you had the girl, your dreams right in front of you, how would you pick her up in Mexican? In Mexican. <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> I said that shit. No offense, sorry. No, pues mira, mi amor, te estoy viendo aquí ya. Tenemos mucho tiempo viéndonos y pues te voy a decir que la neta estás bien preciosa y me gustaría pues... No sé, llevarte a comer. ¿Te da hambre? ¿Te da hambre a ti? Porque a mí me da un chingo de hambre. Si quieres ir a comer conmigo, pues vamos. Yo conozco unos tacos que están bien riquísimos. Hay una coca bien fría. Y si quieres, ahí vamos a las películas. Y si te quieres casar conmigo después, pues te damos. <risa> That's how it hustle, dog. So fucking smooth, bro. Straight to the point, I guess, right? Yeah, that was actually straight as straight as it gets, bro. You, as as you, it gets. Fucking, you fucking took it to eat and then offered to marry her. I think, you know, I by think the end just, of the joke, there was she was pregnant. And this is the thing. And this is the thing, right? I think, look, dog, women love food, bro. Yeah. So if you say, I love to eat, you, are you, you get hungry, right? I would tell a girl, like, hey, would you, hey, you get hungry, right? Do you get hungry? Yeah, I do get hungry. Oh, me too. Let's go eat. All right. But that was your persona now, just saying it right now. You feel like you have this game in real life, though? No. No. <laughs> no, no, I get nervous. He's like in front of the camera. I Mira, mamita, yo te compro lo que tú quieras, lo que tú quieras comer. I don't I have a Mexican accent. I'm nervous right accent. now because I've been married for 13 years. Like, I've never been out in the wild. It's been 13 yes, years. Yes, me, me, me neither, man. So when you asked me that, I was like, what do I say, you bro? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it, it'd be kind of weird, man. And I'd probably be thinking about, you know, my ex-girl, which is my wife now. You know, I'd probably yeah. be like, man, would she be, would she be approving of this right now? I have a friend. I had a friend. I'd be like, what she think I'm being right now? Fake. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he looked at Eric. Right? Edit, edit this shit out. <laughs> edit this shit out. I never, bro. I had my boy, my boy one time told me, he was like, yo, Edgar, he goes, yo, you got to stop making these girls laugh because that's all I know how to do, bro. Mm -hmm. I'll make you laugh. I want them. That's he used it. to love hanging out with me because I win them over and then he'll take out, but then I'm still making them laugh. Everybody's making who moves. Is, who, yo estoy aquí, aquí, what chiste. girl do you think is happier? The girl with the comedian or the girl with the rich man? The girl with the comedian. Why? Because we really make them fucking laugh, bro. We make them feel good inside. We huh? make them feel good inside. You know what that's, you know, like, money can't buy that shit. I'm pretty sure it could. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I mean, yeah, unless, money. Unless that rich guy's taking it to a comedy <laughs> club every night. Like, you want to laugh? <laughs> <laughs> they were fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you want to laugh or you want to go shopping? And be like, all right, concrete, call me later. <laughs> I'll laugh later. <laughs> but I don't know, man. I, yeah, definitely, man. I don't know. I, I look at those girls that hang out with these rich motherfuckers and be like, are they really happy? Oh, shit, huh? Who do, you think is who, do, who do you think's happier? The guy with the, guy with the stay-at-home uh, mom and cooks or the... Or, Or the or the guy with the uh, with the CEO wife. Wait, wait, wait! The guy who's staying at home with his mom. No, the guy with the stay-at-home wife and oh, or the girl or, or the guy with the CEO wife. Yeah, and, he's, I, and, and he's a stay-at-home husband. Oh, I got better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just like made it. Honestly, the right answer would be the 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 at home. Dad, but let's all be honest. The CEO got money. This guy knows you, what this fucker does. Let me ask you: If a girl came right now and said, "Edgar, I make a lot of money. I make over two hundred fifty thousand k a year. I just, I want you to stop, stop, stop all this stuff. You're, the comedy, stop it. I just, I just want to take care of you and just, you know, when I come home, make sure the house is clean, make sure there's food on the table, and when, you know." When it's time, just take care of just take care of me, Daddy. What would you do? No, you wouldn't give it all up, dog. Nah. Fuck no. 
You no, wouldn't no, give that's it like, all up. That's like, that, you might as well tell her, man, that, you know what? Cut my balls while you're there, you know? What, <laughs> she, she just Cut said my shot, balls. But she just Dude. said she's trying to take care of you, dog. No, dog, no, man. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. She's going to embarrass you everywhere, bro. You're going to be like a pendejo behind the, the supermarket. What else goes in the cart, baby? Get the fuck out of here. So you wouldn't be a cap dude? Dude, she said you got to stop all this bullshit. No, bro. If she would have told me, okay, you can keep doing your bullshit and I'm going to take care of you. Oh, you want your yeah. cake and you want to eat it too. You want to be Who out there. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't want the you cake and eat it too? There? Come on. N not out there, but you made it seem like, okay, I mean, you know all this running around that you're doing with this little comedy, comedy shit? Because you know you heard this shit. I mean, you've been married for a long time, but I've, I've had a few exes. I'm like, oh, your little comedy, comedy you're shit. Little com you know, I hate yeah, when they yeah, say, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. that's how they hit you. A little, your little comedy, yeah. comedy oh, bullshit. Are you still doing that? Yeah. Are oh, you still doing Oh, how nice. Cool. Yeah, you're nice. just kind of like scratching an edge. How's it going? Do you know how that? That shit hurts when they ask you how's it going because you no, know it's, it's malicious. It's, wor <laughs> it's worse when the tío at the cookout says it. Todavía sigues de payaso. Tú todavía sigues con los chistes esos de payaso. Todavía sigues de payaso. The fucked up thing is that you gotta tell them the same thing. You gotta look at them and be like, no, this year, tú sabes las cosas vienen. Este año, este año. Y cuando solo dijiste tú el año pasado, payaso. Este you año. Know? What do you think happened? to the S in the Puerto Rican language. I don't know, bro. We fucked this shit up. Puerto Ricans come up with some words, bro, that like, not, and I didn't realize it because, all right, so being Puerto Rican and growing up in the Bronx, there was a lot of Puerto Ricans. So I grew up in a Puerto Rican community. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of Puerto Ricans. So you don't really realize it. Speaking to my parents, I'm thinking we know how to speak. And then until you start meeting other fucking you know, <laughs> other nationalities, you're like, what the fuck, yo? Like, for example, Puerto Ricans say guial. You know what that what is? is? Guial. Yo voy a guial. Yo voy a guial. Guial. No, no, guiar, guiar. Guiar. You know what that is? Guiar, yeah, guide you. No, that's drive for a Puerto Rican. Yo voy a guiar el carro. Oh, yo te voy a guiar. Yo voy a guiar ah, Okay. So there's certain words, like, like my girl now, she's Colombian. Okay. You know, and I remember my, her dad, I would tell him, Yo, usted guía mucho. And he looked at me like, 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 what the fuck did you say to me? He gave yeah, me that look. What? I was like, tú guía mucho. He's like, he, go, he didn't understand it. I was like, and it's manejar. Manejar. So, yeah, conducir. usted maneja, usted condu conducir, conducir. But it's like, like, those are words, but Puerto Ricans really. Sofa, ceiling, jufo. Ceiling? Ceiling. Ceiling. Tacho, mira, dale un cantazo al ceiling. You know, <laughs> you know when you from, yo, dude, if you're from New York, if you in, in New York, people live on top of each other, man. So if the people upstairs make noise, bro. You grab the broom, either yeah. that ceiling. You be like, pa, pa, pa. Have you guys, have you guys adopted English languages and put it into like the Spanish language, or, or, or you know, because we do like here in LA, like we say, you know, even my dad says it, and my dad was born in Mexico, but my dad says, hay parqueate. And parquete is not technically the word, it's estacionate. Yeah. Par parquete is parked in English. We just uh -huh. put a little Chicanoism into it. Exactly. Yeah, like a good word for us is uh, uh, fornitura. Furniture. Furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is priceless. You were like. Eh, vamos para la tienda esa furnitura a ver si tienen un sofá cama. Furnitura, <laughs> you guys just fucking we. Yo, dude, they, the Puerto Ricans, and it's crazy because I took my like I took my girl to Puerto Rico for the first time, and Beautiful. she's like, babe, I don't I don't understand no one. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. You, you gotta that. listen closely. You, you gotta listen. And, and, and the same thing here, like, and people go, yo, I love your accent. I love our Puerto Rican sound. Yeah. I love our Colombian sound. Mm. You know, Colombian woman to me have the sexiest fucking oh, voice. Yeah. You know, but then it's it's th hearing everybody, even the Mexican sound. You know, everybody has a different flow. Yeah, and that's what I like about out here that you see that different flow. It's a little bit of everything. You know, even though I'm by myself out here, there's no Puerto Rican. So, if any of Concrete's followers who are Puerto Rican, please feel free to follow me. Yes, follow him at <laughs> Rivera Comedy. Before yeah. you know, before we take this little break, I want to just uh, let them know. Do where are you gonna be at next? Next Yo, week. Where are you gonna be at next week? Next week, fuck, bro. Chacho, I don't even know, bro. Think I'm, about, be, I'm with you. I'm gonna be with you. You gonna be with the whole so fucking week? I'm gonna be concrete. Gonna be with me. Yes. On the weekend, you're gonna be with me. Uh, let's go ahead and roll his videos. Take a quick little commercial break. Check out this video, my man, doing stand up. Let's go. Look, that's all I am, bro. 
They just found out like a few years ago. I never told them. But one thing I love to do is get high and visit them. Who smoked weed by a round of applause in this fucker? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the bus driver. He goes, I got a union, bitch. He's dying to retire. As soon as I retire, I'm going to smoke weed and drive the bus. Yo, get high in front of your parents. It's a whole different experience. Dude, I used to do it all the time, right? One time, I got high out of my fucking mind. I went to my parents' house, right? I went to my parents' house, high out of my fucking mind, but I thought I was good because I put Vicene on. You know when you high and you feel fucked up, you're like, oh my God, I can't even stand straight. <laughs> and then you put Visine on, and it's like Visine fixes your whole fucking body. Don't that shit fix it? You're like, oh my God, look, I don't even have a gun. That's how I pulled up to the door, bro, and I knocked on the door, knocked on the door. My Puerto Rican father opened the door in his high water shorts. Let me explain. So you look confused. You're confused. Latino, high water shorts. Look, them shits were all the way up to here. <laughs> and his right ball was sticking out. <laughs> you mean so high and you see some shit, you like, oh my God, was that the ball? Dude, I just looked up. I looked up. I was like, oh my God, I just saw my father's ball. <laughs> I, I, look, I, could, I, I closed my eyes and I started doing this TV wonder. I did this shit for like two minutes. I said, should I look again? Would that make me gay? What the f I said, this weed is good, yeah, man. This is my boy right there. I just saw my yeah. father's ball. Edgar better comedy, oh, giving us some good yes. laughs, bro. Dude. Hey, I didn't know what video you were going to pick, man. It's funny that you picked that one. Your <laughs> Puerto Rican father. Yes. Did he ever catch you smoking weed like that? Yo, bro, listen. Let me tell you, man. I'll be 100% honest, yo. I, my father found out, well, for me, that I smoked weed, uh, fuck, three years ago. Three years ago, dude. So when I talk about hiding it from my parents, bro, I fucking you hit literally, it. bro. Wait, I'm a viejo, bro. I'm a fucking grandfather. <laughs> and my parents did not know. Because they old school. They really old school. Like, yeah, oh, not eso, no, it's a droga. It's a droga. droga sí. So when I hear people that be like, yo, I, 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 I smoke my, my father. <laughs> I smoke my, my dad. I smoke my mom. I'm like, yo, I wish, man. It's crazy, right? I wish. Like, I, I wish one day I could be like, papi, toma, man. Date un cantacito, papi, un cantacito. No te va a hacer nada. Duerme, se duerme. Se so duerme. Sleep, I, gave, I gave him an edible one time. He said he got up at 3 o'clock in the morning and he ate the whole kitchen and fucking munchies. I was like, it's <laughs> He got dude. the munchies, bro. So I don't, they, they really, they, they, they old school. But yeah, like three years ago, I went to PR and, and uh, my mom had passed. So I went to PR to hang out with him. Oh, yeah. And I was there for like six weeks, but I said, no way in hell. So I have a brother, que está loquito, bro. You know, he had a motorcycle accident. So he's not all there in his head, but he's out of control. He's that dude that we could be hanging out, bro. Yeah. And this motherfucker just take out his shit, start rolling. <laughs> I'm like, dude, we in church. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, dude, he don't care. He don't care. So we were sitting in the balcony and he take out his shit and I get nervous under this motherfucker. And he turns that shit on and he passes it to me. And I looked at the blunt and I looked at my dad. And I looked at the blunt and I looked at my dad. And my dad was like, go ahead, pendejo. Just to get to fuma. <laughs> I and I was that. like, yes. And I still feel uncomfortable, bro. I, like, I, if I want if I want to smoke weed, bro, I want to smoke weed with somebody who's cool. Yeah, it's, I said, you, you don't want to smoke weed with somebody who's going to judge you and be like, hey, yo. Like, every puff is going to take your life away. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. But, yo, that changed everything, bro. That's tight. Now, now he sees me. You know, I was there a few weeks ago, bro, and it's hilarious. They still old school. He said, he said, tú no tienes miedo. And I'll translate it in English. Yeah, he yeah. said, tú no tienes miedo que, que tú vayas a coger otro vicio con, es, con, ese, con esa marihuana. He's like, you're going to have that gateway drug. He said, yeah, you're not scared that you're going to pick up other habits. And I said, ¿de qué tú hablas, papi? He goes, tú no tienes miedo que te vaya a empezar a meter cocaína. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck, bro? He, <laughs> he said that shit out loud to me. I was like, no, pa. I'm a comedian. I have no fucking money. I can't afford no coke. <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here, bro. So how, how do they feel about you being a comedian? Oh man, dude! It took me it took me years for them to to you know to see it, see it, see it. And they still, you know, my father, my father came around, 
But yeah, in the beginning they were like, que como de pendejo como, no, you know, they like, come, trabajar, come, get a coming from job. a yeah, coming from a you know Latino household, that shit was never influenced. They were like, no, you know, they weren't thinking like, dude, and I had a lot of jobs that I left because of comedy. Because opportunities came up, and I'm like, yo, I can't. You know, I got two weeks? What? I got to fucking go. And they were like, no, no. And um, it took me years, bro. It took me years to get them to come around. And it's crazy. I've been doing this for 19 years. And my mom got to see me once alone. And then my dad saw me once. And then they saw me together one mm -hmm. time. So three times, you know, in, in the yeah. whole 19 years. Damn. To, you know, but my father saw it that 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 time that um they saw me together. I have a friend who does comedy in Spanish, Saulo Garcia, a funny ass Colombian comic out of Miami, and he flew to New York and he had a show, and he was in New York by himself. And you know how people think comics got the best life ever, yo, because we traveling, we on the road, we're you're, here, you're, we're there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that shit is lonely as fuck, bro. <laughs> we look good when we like this. The minute we put that phone down, you're like, ay, the old man, you know. We people laughing and they go back to the hotel. It's bullshit. Room. You're like, like looking at the walls. So it was like it was it was um dude, it was Christmas Eve and he was alone in New York, and his family was in Miami. And I hit him up, and I said, yo, dude, what are you doing? He goes, I'm not in the hotel. I said, get ready, man, I'm gonna pick you up, man. I'm gonna take you to my family's house. We're going to my brother's house. He said, yo, can I bring my guitar? I said, yeah, bro. And yo, I brought this dude to my house, bro. He took out his guitar, he started singing Colombian songs and jokes, mm. and had the whole fucking family laughing. And everyone was laughing except me, cause I'm like, motherfucker, I do this too, yo. My mother was like, este es más cómico que yo he visto en mi vida. Yo, so I took, I took it the next, that same day he gave me two tickets for a show and I gave it to my parents and I bought tickets for my, my brother and his wife, my sister and husband mm. and one for myself. And I went, check this shit out, it's a true story, man. I fucking sat, I was sitting in the audience next to my parents, my brother, my sister, my, my, my you know, and, and, and we were just sitting there in dark. And from backstage, he goes, Señores, señores, ¿cómo está todo el mundo? Antes de empezar esta noche, yo quiero que ustedes sepan que tengo un amigo, un colega, comediante, respetuado, lo quiero mucho, y está sentado allá afuera, y me encantaría que se trepara Caribe, si unos cuantos minutos. Sí, in other sure. words, yo, he was like, yo, my friend is in the audience. He's out here. Would, would, you would you do a few minutes without even telling me, bro? Without even telling me. And yo, he said, hey, God, and I got up, bro. And I did, a, I have a joke called Super Sun, that you'll see it on my special coming out soon, right? And I have a bit, and it's basically on my father. I'm my parents, but it's on my father. So I got to do that bit for my father and my mother in Spanish, mm -hmm. which they got to understand it. And that was the day that he turned around. He was like, all right. That was the day, because afterwards, like, dude, I so bad. They were taking pictures with him. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, he felt like a celebrity, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now he's like, he's that person that tells everyone, el hijo mío se chiste. <laughs> this is embarrassing, bro. You have to tell everyone. Which, which today, you know, like you know, like speaking about you know fathers and 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 kids and and, and all that good stuff. I, I got to do a skit today with the kid Bryce. I don't know if you know who he is. He's part of the Anki Boys crew. And dude, this kid is so talented, bro. Like it's just raw, natural talent, bro. Yeah. He's eight years old. I told him the script and what it was, and. No hesitation, got it in one take. Really? In one take, bro. We did a second one. We came up with it right there. He's eight years old, dog. And he's like, you know, he's eight, so you gotta remember he's a kid, so he's like, he's like moving around and dancing around and, oh, and like, you know shit. what I'm saying? Just, you know, he's, he's a kid, right? But he's, everything you're telling him is just like, boom, he's downloaded into, this, into his brain, dog. And then we're like, once we yell action, he's like, bah, 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 and does this shit, and he's like, how was that? I was like, dude, what? that was fucking amazing. Like, and I'm, it's amazing that his parents see that. That his parents see that. That's dude. more amazing to me because exactly. I feel like his mother was especially there, she in the really Latino nice, yeah. household, bro. That the yeah. arts are never influenced, dude. You know, I see a lot of little kids like that. That you look at them and you're like, yo, this kid got talent, my dude. Yeah, like, put this raw. kid, in, put him in acting, get him yeah, in front of a talent. camera. Just raw you know talent. what I'm saying? But we're so caught up on blue collar work and you know, on having benefits and all this bullshit yeah. that you don't you don't see it, bro. And and speaking of raw talent and and kid child actors and all that and child being famous, uh, there was uh, little Tay passed away today. Rest in peace to her. Her brother passed away today. And if you don't know little Tay, little Tay is uh, was 14 years old. 
She became a uh, internet sensation uh, when she started doing flex videos and she would pop up with a bunch of money and she would be like talking about cars and she was kind of trolling a little bit. She was kind of like, yo, I got the money, y'all, I'm, I'm the one with the, you know, all this blah, 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 shit, right? And dude, she, got, she, she, she gained up to 3.3 million viewers. Uh, she was doing really great. A lot, she was getting back, her parents and her family was getting backlash because it was kind of, how can you let a little girl talk like that and this and that or whatever. She was eight? Uh, at the time, she must have been like eight years old, right? I, okay. No, at like nine, 10 years old or whatever. She died at, she died at 14. She blew up in, I want to say 2018. And that's when she was really doing it. Anyway, she passed away today. Tragically, not only did, did she pass away, but her brother passed away as well, which I believe... If it's not him, it could have been another brother, but it, one of her brothers was her social media manager. So I believe he was the one that was like putting her on camera, you know, kind of telling her what to do, what to say, like, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. scripting the situation in a way. Um, how do you feel about putting kids into the social media world? You know what, bro? I think kids nowadays are so into social media world that they, you know, but I don't know, bro. I, I, I don't I don't have little kids like that, you know, so how do you feel about 37 year old men being highly into social media? I'm going to look at this camera now because I didn't like the face that concrete gave me when he answered that question. He went like this. I mean, I think social media, we, we need social media. Social media yeah. is the way to fucking go. Old jokes aside, so if you do have a kid, bro, that shows talent, that makes you fucking laugh, yeah, let him out. I don't know what this little girl used to do because you said she was always talking all this, you know, shit that was crazy and flossing. That's a whole different story. But if your kid has a talent, dude, fuck yeah. Put him in the social media. Throw that shit out there. Sometimes I feel like, what am I doing, dog? You? Yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm like, you know, I, I'll get those comments that it'll just be like, they'll be like, and those are the ones. Come on, right? dog, you're old as fucking fat, <laughs> dog, let it go. And I'm like, what? I'm so happy. Yo, you get eight, <laughs> you get 89 great comments and one comment that calls you a fat ass and old, and that's the one that we listen to. That's, yeah. yeah, isn't it crazy how that's like, the negative always stands out. Always, always, bro. Right? But nah, but don't fuck no. Don't you ever fucking think that shit, man. Yeah, you I wish I had more. I, I wish I had more of your drive, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I, I think, I, I think, you know, it, it's it's not necessarily. Well, I guess yeah. There's a part of it is a drive, right? Perito, it's like okay, you want to be great, you want to do what you do, and then the other part is just saying, fuck it. Right? I think it's subconsciously we tend to think like, oh, what are people gonna think of me? All right, so if you leave right now, what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> Me? No, I don't know how to do much. I'm going to be honest. Exactly. With you. Yeah, I haven't, I, I've been in entertainment more than half my life, Perrito. More than half my life now. And this is all I know how to do. So if you go tell me, go find a job, dog. Like, do they still do applications? Like, in person? I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know. See what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how, I don't know if it's online now. I don't know how you, you know, do you have to send a resume, I'm assuming. You gotta yeah. send a resume, but like my resume would be like, when was your last employment? I'd be like, two thousand and one. We're at foot yeah, action. Yeah, foot, action. <laughs> foot action. Like you're a thirty-seven year old man. Concrete's resume <laughs> has eight pages and just the two first pages. Of fucking, and then after that, it's all blank. It's all blank. 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 And, and it, says, it just has an NA blank. not available. <laughs> and at the end, it says YouTube podcast coming YouTube soon. Podcast <laughs> coming soon. Like that would be my resume, dog. Of like two jobs, dog. I would, I would be more afraid of. I, I wouldn't say like uh, it, it question the fact why am I doing it or, or thinking about live i would say fuck it I, I need to do this shit yeah no i need to sure. do this shit as much as i can bro yeah i feel like like, like we were talking about earlier how just everything changes you know i came into comedy 19 years ago it was a whole different world you know i respect you because you're paying your dues and you're doing your respect shit out bro. there you know you win you in the game but you also respect the game of comedy and there's a lot of cats out here who do one show and now they're a comedian and I was like, nah, Bobby, that shit don't work like that. You know, it took me years to fucking call myself a comic. So I see a lot of the old, older comics who hate on all these 
new sensations coming out, the Instagrams, the kids with the followings that are doing yeah, it. No shit. And there's a lot that are, that, I mean, that are like, what the fuck, bro? And then there's some that are funny. There's pockets of fucking comics out there who are doing it both ways, you know, doing the live and the social media. And I tell the old cast, yo, instead of complaining and hating, bro, and dissing and doing this shit, get in front of a camera, bro. Find the niche. And I'm talking to myself at times. You know, sometimes I'm like, yo, what the hell I got to do? Yeah. You know, to, to get myself out there. So social media, yo, it's, it's the way to go, bro. It's the social... way the world moves right now. Well, I think, yeah, like, I think it's definitely the way the world moves, Perrito. I think before people even get up and take a shit, the first thing they do is look at their phone. I don't even go take a shit if I don't have my phone. I don't feel right. You know, like, you don't feel right. You know, you got to scroll at least, see what's going on. <laughs> like, I used to turn on the fucking news in the morning. I used to watch either CNN or whatever the fuck, right? And I used to turn it on in the morning and see what was going on for news. And now I don't even do that. Like, you find all the news on social media. It's like, mm -hmm. just scroll a couple times and you'll see what the hell is newsworthy in a way, right? Yeah. Uh, whether it's entertainment or something big that's going on. Uh, but, like, I mean, you can find out a lot of shit on social media. I mean, most news stations now have an Instagram, so all you got to do is follow the local one and you're good. And not only that, I think, just, like, society now is different. This new generation, is they brought up on that shit. When we were younger, I didn't have I didn't have a computer. I didn't have a fucking phone, you know. Yeah. I had to rely on going outside and playing. Yeah. Or looking out I'm, the window. I think I'm the last of that generation. Yeah, yeah. so. I'm you, a 90s kid, so I don't. Like, I think 2000s. I don't like the way you said that shit. Again, again, you keep on. Right? You're, you, emph you're emphasizing 90s. <laughs> what what year are you born? 85, dog. 85, indeed. How old were yeah. you in 85? Man, I was just nine. You were, you were, just, you were, just, a little, you were just a little Edgar. You were just a little Edgar. 85, Moving around. In Puerto Rico, bro. In Puerto Rico. <laughs> and then you, so, so you didn't have a phone there, obviously. Nah, bro, bro, I got my, yo, dude, I got my first computer when I was 19, dude. Okay. I think, like, like, yeah. like, like official, yo. I, I think I was like 17, but that's because my homeboy gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I, my, I had to buy it for myself. Uh, let me tell my father. Mira, papi, comprame una computadora. I'm like, ¿eh? Tú estás loco. ¿Una qué? <laughs> Carajo. You know? Va a ser ingeniero. So I think, like, like now it's much easier mm. for that, for that, you know, for these people to go and just fucking do shit, bro. Social media is... is it's, it's, it's changed the game for sure. It's changed it, bro. Like a motherfucker, bro. Big time. Man, that's, that's, that's dope right there, Perrito. Well, there it is, Perritos. First party in the <laughs> yo i felt like concrete had a you, we had we had a format and then you get out here and you just fucking go i like this shit though yeah i like this shit sometimes uh, sometimes I, you try to overproduce it pa que tanto pedo pa que tanto pedo i thought you was gonna talk about some bochinche and shit when i heard you live this morning we're like yo we're going i'm gonna talk about the dissing i thought i said who this is my boy fucking concrete nah. and i was like i thought it was gonna be personal bro oh you and, thought and, yeah oh, man that's clickbait fuck I bro clickbaited you yes bro i live did in a valley that's did like I an succeed? hour and a half away <laughs> did i succeed because i because I, I was I like i'm gonna go out there and be like who is dissing my boy no because in the comedy game there's this dissing there's always a lot of dissing i'm sure so somebody has something dissed like me that. i'm sure somebody Somebody has said something negative, but I don't really pay attention to shit, dog. I don't, you know, even even on the bad comments, I'm just like, mm, I read it, hurtful, but I won't pay too much attention to it. Then I'll just move on. Um, but nah, dog. Even if they did diss me, I don't know. If somebody dissed you right now, would you would you say something back? Yeah, nah. I just feel like it's. Mm. You know what's crazy? Cause uh, the people are like, yo, you should do those shows where you diss people. You know, like the roasting, the snaps, roasting, um, and. And it's crazy because I could roast the shit out of an audience. But me having to roast you or, you know, like, like, a, homie? like, like, like a homie, not, a, not just a homie, but it's like somebody like when you put me in a spot yeah. that I official, I have to roast you, I think it's too much on my head. I'll be like, nah, vete pal carajo, nah, it's bro. Too much. Okay, got you it. know, but like, like, you know, as a comic, I go on stage, bro, and, and people call me, yo, you're an asshole, bro. I fucking, I'll talk to anyone, bro, and whatever you tell me, I'll roast the shit out of them. Is it because you just don't know them and you're just like, fuck it? Or is it because, are you like, you gotta, you, you, you kind of have somewhat of a safety net because it's like, it's comedy, you're on stage, and it's, that's what we're supposed yeah, to do. I mean, the fact that I don't know them, you know, I can see the fact that we're on stage. I yeah. know I know what line I could cross. I know when I hit a nerve, you could see them people's faces, when you're like, okay, that's it. 
I'm not gonna fuck with this dude no more. Yeah. You know, but when you put me in a spot that I gotta like, okay, you know what? Snap on concrete. And, and you say some shit, and then you say some shit to me, and I'm like, okay, you know, because we're touchy as shit, bro. Yeah. We fucking, we'll snap on anyone, but yo, we got sensitive fucking feelings, bro. You tell me some shit, and I'll think about that shit all day. Like when you were snapping on my age, and the fact that you said that I got short <laughs> socks, you know? Like you forgot to talk about that, fucker. Oh, well, it's because he's wearing ankle socks, and I haven't ankle seen socks. ankle socks in years. And yo, come on, bro. And that's a 90s thing. Ankle socks is, is 90s, early 2000s, you know? This shit, yo. I, so you've never worn this shit? I've worn ankle socks, and I, I, my, I'm telling you, it was around like the 2000s, like late, late, late 90s. I, I made Concrete laugh because I told him I thought it was a Mexican thing, yo. Because I really oh, the high socks? out here, you don't see, yeah, high socks. You, you don't see that in New York nah. like that. You don't see it. You don't see the high socks, huh? Not in New York, bro. That's crazy. You, and you guys are now, like, maybe now it's different. Yeah. But when I was coming up in the 90s, no, bro. 90s, yeah. You, if you wore sh like shorts, you had to hide the socks. And these are like fucking ankles. I have the other ones that are like Those the female ankles. <laughs> yeah, these are okay. You know the other ones that go all the way down? Yeah. So now you made me feel like kind of weird and no, shit. It, no, it makes the Jordans look dope. I, I dig it, dog. I dig it. I Yo, dig don't it. bring the camera down, bro, because nah, I got the, the shortest shorts ever. I'm wearing my father's high water shorts for this podcast. Those look dope. That dude. I didn't even know we were doing, bro. No, dude, those are like super dad shorts. Those are dope. I'm a dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are dad shorts, but it's okay. I'm a stepdad. You're a stepdad? Oh, okay. Pfft. Shit. You're I'm a, a grandfather who just became a stepfather. You're great, dude. Those shorts look amazing on you, Yeah, my, my, step, my stepdaughters gave it to me. Check this out. Before we leave, dog. I want you to look into that camera and say something honest. I want you to uh, find the best words to break up with your girl that's loved you for the last 10 years into that camera. What's the nicest way to put her down? Let's go ahead and look into that camera right there. I want you to know that I know you think I'm the problem. But in actuality, one day, you're going to realize that it was you, that it was you. And now that I'm single, I'm going to fuck everything. And then I blow and I walk away. That's a Puerto Rican breakup. That's a Puerto Rican breakup. Puerto Rican breakup. I, you, Dude, I, honestly, I think I had one breakup where I had a conversation, bro. Other than that, bro, I, every breakup is like in Puerto Ricans is so. I think that ah, was great. I think that was great. I hate you. You thought it was great? Yeah. I don't know. Your face told me otherwise. No, you it was you great. looked blank, yo. No, you were I, like, I, I thought you, that was you great. looked like I was actually breaking up with you. You were like, no, but I was no, sad no. for a minute because I felt that. You I felt, felt that? that? Did you? Did you did I incorporate real feelings into that did monologue? You, did you ever, like, like did somebody ever dump you? Yeah, bro. Damn, you say, like, it happened a lot of times. Damn, son. Like, nah, like, just two. Just two? Damn. Was it your fault? No. Nah. Never. Never, bro. Come on. This is live, bro. Come on. You you're a great you guy. Fucking, I'm a great fucking, I'm a catch. <laughs> I'm a fucking catch, bro. A catch? Nobody ever admits. I don't know, bro. Nah, uh, it's like nobody ever admits that they lost the fight. You know, they nobody like, ever admits that they had a problem. Yeah. You course. ever ask someone who breaks up, like, what happened? She was a fucking crazy. He was a bitch and all this bullshit. Nobody ever says it was. Yeah, it, it was me. me. It was me. I, I, I know. I know. Like, oh, yeah. So you can honestly say right now that you were never the no, problem. Bro. I am the fucking problem, bro. Yeah. I can honestly say that. I was acting earlier, but now I'm telling you, I'm the fucking problem. You're the problem, dude. It's it's. It, it takes a lot, bro. I feel like the older I get, the more I understand my father, dude. Mm. You ever feel like that? I don't know. Like, like, like the older we get and we, the, the things that we didn't understand as kids, one day will pop in your life and you're like, oh, shit. And I've realized, yo, I'm, yo, I appreciate my girl. It's for you, girl. I appreciate her because she puts up with me because I know I'm not easy. That's dope. I'm not easy. But a lot of people pretend like, oh, no, I'm perfect. I'm like, nah, hell no. I'm fucking local, bro. I'm a comedian. Out of 100, well, out of 100%, how far are you from perfect? Wow. That's some deep shit, bro. You're like 20% away from perfect? I want to say, yeah, 75. The 20, 25% away. 25% from being perfect? From being perfect. Damn, dog. That's, that's a high number, <laughs> dog. Shit. That's I, 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 you said 20, so I was like, okay. What's that, what's that 20 
Like if you had, if you had, uh, it would be a hundred. If I had, if you had that twenty five percent, what what's that twenty five percent that you're missing? Oof, the next level in this in, in this career, this next okay, that's what's missing. So when I hit that level, where I'll be like, okay, I'm at, I'm where I'm at, and then everything, every other aspect, we got covered. There it is. That's he it, said bro. it. I said it. I so said it. So follow him right now, Edgar Rivera Comedy on Instagram. You guys can check him out. The link will be right here. Go ahead and follow him right there, dog. Let us know what you thought follow about. Follow me, podcast. yo. Follow me. Drop the comment. Let us know if you're toxic in the relationship. And if you are, let us know your toxic trait in the comments right now. What is your toxic trait in your relationship? Be honest. Be honest. I like more. this. We could do a podcast on this. I would definitely sit down with like you and that, talk right? shit. Fuck yeah, be bro. Be honest. Be honest in the comments. Let us know. Edgar Rivera, your boy Concrete. It's the Concrete Facts. Let's go.